भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय This morning we are studying Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, Verse Number 11. Pandu Putra Upasinan, Prashaya Prema Sangatan, अभ्यचानुरागाशूतेन चक्षुषा पांडुपुत्रुपासीना प्रशया प्रेम संगता अभ्यचानुरागाश अंधी भूते न चक्षुषा toward Pandu, the late father of Maharaj Yudhishthira and his brothers, Putran, the sons of Upasinan, sitting silently nearby, Prashaya, being overtaken, Prema, in feelings of love, Sangatan, having gathered, Abhyachashta, congratulated, Anuraga, feelingly, Ashray, by tears of ecstasy, Andi Bhutena, overwhelmed, Chakshusha, with his eyes. Okay, that's the last one. Translation and purple by Shri Prabhupada. The sons of Maharaj Pandu were sitting silently nearby, overtaken with affection for their dying grandfather. Seeing this, Bhishpadev congratulated them with feeling. There were tears of ecstasy in his eyes, for he was overwhelmed by love and an affection. Purport. When Maharaj Pandu died, his sons were all small children, and naturally they were brought up under the affection of elderly members of the royal family, especially by, specifically by Bhishma Dev. Later on, when the Pandavas were grown up, they were cheated by cunning Duryodhan and company, and Bhishma Dev, although he knew that the Pandavas were innocent and were unnecessarily put into trouble, could not take the side of the Pandavas for political reasons. At the last stage of his life, when Bhishma Dev saw his most exalted grandsons, headed by Maharaj Yudhishthira, sitting very gently at his side, the great warrior grandfather could not check his loving tears 
which were automatically flowing from his eyes. He remembered the great tribulations suffered by his most pious grandsons. Certainly he was the most satisfied man because of Yudhishthira's being enthroned in place of the Ryodhan. And thus he began to congratulate them. When I um, read this, um, actually I was supposed to give class tomorrow and then Chaturatma Prabhu asked me to change with him. So that was last week. So when I read this um, verse, I thought about um, a play that I had seen and probably some of you had seen done by Lohi Taksha and Rasagya, Karna and Kunti. How many of you have seen that? Not, not many. Hardly any, I should say, here. But this was, um, at least when I saw it, it was in Gita Nagri, I think in 1982. Uh, Sishibu was saying he might have seen that in New York. Um, just such an play with emotions, so many emotions there, Kunti and Karna, the meeting of uh, them and Kunti asking, Kunti letting Karna know that he, um, she is the mother. I, I remember sitting down and just crying and crying in that, in that play, watching that play. This, this is, um, Certainly that, that Sambhad, let's say Kunti and Karna Sambhad, didn't come into the Bhagavatam. That was not part of the Bhagavatam, it's Mahabharata. But other things have made in the Bhagavatam specifically for some reasons. So you have Kunti um, saying her prayers to, Bish, um, to uh, Krishna. That made into the Bhagavatam because it's a separation of Krishna and uh, um, Kunti is feeling separation from Krishna, he's leaving. And in the, this first canto, we see that there's so, so many pastimes are here that are full of separation in the first canto. So we have Kunti, then we are coming here with Bhishma Dev expressing his feelings to Krishna. Then later on, we have um, Arjun when he comes and um, Krishna leaves and Yudhishthira is wondering what happened to uh, why is Arjun not coming back and then Arjun comes and tells Yudhishthira Maharaj that Krishna has left I, I remember ask, asking Kalyapani to if you could please do that as a play you know just uh, you need really good actors to do a play to bring out emotions you know and that play about uh, Arjun feeling um, separation from Krishna and it's like just reading the Bhagavatam is pretty um, yeah it's pretty emotional so this is this is the topic today of my class is emotions emotions so we we're seeing that how Bhishma Dev he just um, welcomed all the sages described that he took care of them according to time and place he, he welcomed them. And then just the previous verse we heard yesterday, a nice class by Adhikarta Prabhu, about Lord Krishna and him, he is being uh, welcomed and worshipped by Bhishma Dev. And now, this verse here. This verse is about two devotees. Two devotees feeling separation from each other. This imminent death is happening of Bhishma Dev. And I say two, although they're all the Pandavas are here, but I'm specifically saying two in regards to Arjun, the hero here, and Bhishma Dev, another hero. They're two heroes, they're two devotees, and they're feeling they're going to be separated. And look at the words that are being used here. 
Yudhishthir, uh, it describes their assembled prashaya prema sangatan. They're overtaken. This is the Pandava. So Arjun is overtaken in feelings of love as he sees his grandfather Bhishma Dev leaving. And Bhishma Dev, he's great warrior, a kshatriya, um, a great grandfather almost at this stage. Um, and he describes andhi bhute na chakshusha, overwhelmed with his eyes with, by tears of ecstasy. Andhi bhute na, it's actually the word literal meaning is he was blinded. So you know how when you're crying, you, you get blind with your tears. So he is, so literal meaning is that he was blinded. He's overwhelmed by tears of ecstasy. These are two devotees, Bhishma Dev and Arjun. Now Bhishma Dev is leaving his body and here describes that Arjun is sitting silently nearby and then Prabhupada even in the purport he says sitting very gently at his side so sitting right next to Bhishma Dev who is about to leave his body and Srila Prabhupada mentions certain things about Bhishma Dev where his who you, you kind of when when somebody is crying and he is leaving his body and the affection is there let's just examine what's going on in his heart or what might have gone into his heart because sometimes we also go through these things he loves his grandson if you have grandsons or if you have children or grandchildren the love between grandparents and grandkids is is actually very special, it's very overwhelming. And so Bhishma Dev was grandfather of Arjuna. And he had, Arjuna had sat on his lap so many times. And he had other grandchildren, Duryodhan and their party, and he loved them too. He had them on his lap as well. He loved all his grandkids. But there was something about Arjun, or the Pandavas, but that he saw them being abused. But he could not do anything. Being abused is one thing, but seeing somebody being abused is actually harder. He's the grandfather who is seeing his, some of his grandkids are being abused by his other grandkids, and he loved them both. But the hard part was that he couldn't say anything. His hands were tied. He couldn't express anything. So can you imagine what his heart must have been? How a feeling of guilt? Prabhupada writes here very clearly that he they were put into trouble and he could not take the side of the Pandavas who were the innocent ones. Not only the innocent ones, but they were fatherless. So more so, they were unprotected. They didn't have a father. And so they were really unprotected. And Bhishma Dev was their grandfather. And how he must have felt, he must have felt that he couldn't protect his grandkids. And so at this stage, Bhishma Dev is leaving his body and you can imagine how happy he must be feeling. Prabhupada writes, he was the most satisfied man. He was most satisfied because he finally felt like all what was meant to be for the Pandavas is actually has happened. It's almost like he felt like he could, he repaid his debt to them. I mean, he did it in other ways too, as we, as we know that when uh, in the story that how uh, Bhishma Dev, when um, uh, 
Krishna told the told Arjun that we need to go to the uh, to Bhishma Dev to find out how he can die. So can you imagine what a question? There are so many questions. What am I supposed to do when I die? When I leave my body? But to ask somebody a question, by the way, how do I kill you? I mean, what a question to ask somebody, how do I kill you? Oh, not anybody. Oh, grandfather, how do I kill you? What a question. And Bhishma, they must have felt so happy. Can you imagine? He must have felt so happy that they came to ask this question. Grandfather, how I could kill, how can we kill you? So he told them, this is how you can kill me. So there are times where Bhishma Dev must have felt so satisfied to do so. And now finally, finally what he wanted, and this he knew that Krishna wanted that, is that Yudhishthir be on the throne. So what a satisfaction he's feeling. He must feel being a real hero at this stage, that all his life he has, seen, he has gone through so much. Bhishma Dev has gone through so much. And finally what he wanted is happening and now he can leave his body in peace not just for that reason because Krishna is also there but right, right now we're concentrating on on Bhishma and Arjun relationship here so that's Bhishma Dev so let's look at let's look at Arjuna Arjuna he's the grandchild and Bhishma Dev is his superior, he's his grandfather, he looks up to him, he loves him, he has sat on his lap, I don't know what Arjun must have, things he must have done and Bhishma Dev must have tolerated as a grandfather or loved it. So here's Arjun and the hard part, it'd be hard to be in Arjun's shoes. Here Arjun loves his grandfather so much, but he says, and he tells uh, Krishna, how can I fight Bhishma Dev? Katham Bhishma ham sankhe. How can I issue the prati yotsyami? He's specifically saying, it's so interesting, I was uh, thinking about this class. He specifically says, how can I by Ishubhi, by, by, the, by arrows, how can I fight Bhishma Dev? It's interesting that he says that because it is him who fought Bhishma Dev with his arrows. It was him who, who got Bhishma Dev on the bed of arrows. So here, Arjun does not want to fight. He says, I don't care. I don't care. They are my gurus. That second chapter is just amazing. Oh, sorry, in the first chapter, no, second chapter. After Krishna brings him there, he says, Guru Nahatvahi Mahanu Bhavan. He says, these are, maha, these are great people. I rather uh, live by begging. Bhoktam Bhiksham. He says, I rather uh, uh, live by begging. But no, Krishna had something else for him. And he's the one who had, he's the one who shot arrows at his grandfather and lay on his bed. What, what, what a, what a feeling, what, even though he heard Arjun, uh, Krishna speaking in the Bhagavad Gita, but still, does that make it any uh, less difficult for him to shoot his grandfather with arrows. These are both devotees. I was thinking that a lot of thoughts were coming to my mind about people leaving their bodies and the guilt, different feelings of guilt. I remember when Sunita um, left and I mean it was so hard when Sunita left her body I mean just she was you know like an 
she's like an older sister to me, a friend, being coming from the same background. It's so funny because even before I met her, people would say, ask me, oh, are you Sunita's sister? So I didn't even know who she was when people would ask me that. And, uh, but yeah, it was so hard that when she left, but harder part was that I remember she was standing right out there outside the temple room that morning before she went to the springs. And she was asking all, all the ladies, oh, it was the last day of the school, and she was asking the ladies, uh, let's go to the spring, come to the spring. And she asked me a few times, and she says, come on, Marmati, let's go to the spring. You have to come to the spring. I said, no, the, I don't like the springs. The water is too cold, and I don't know how to swim. And she said, come on, that's why you get a noodle. being the instrument to have another devotee leave. These are things that are very real in life. And uh, it's very difficult when you think about it, when you look at this verse, and uh, you see that these things happen. And uh, yeah, so here Arjun is, loves his grandfather. He doesn't want to kill his grandfather. But why does he have to do it? Wouldn't have been, that been better if everybody lived and they would have just lived by begging? But no. Because this is what Krishna wanted. All the arguments that Arjuna was giving were pretty good arguments according to dharma. But Krishna didn't say no. Following me is the, is the greatest of all. But here, so Arjun is, is, um, is there in, next to his grandfather who is leaving his body. And so you wonder, who is the hero here? Is Arjun the hero? Surely he is the hero. But is Bhishma Dev the hero? Bhishma Dev, <laughs> to me it's like, he is the real hero. Although it's interesting because Bhishma Dev was in the wrong camp. He was in the wrong camp. But we heard we heard from Sham Kishore Prabhu that that how uh, Bhishma Dev, although external reasons were not not good, actually Prabhupada says in, in the purport of. Uh, Guru Nahatvahi Mahanu Bhavan, he, he describes that actually um, Bhishma Dev and Drona, they were not fit to be, they were teachers to be rejected because they had lost their sense of discrimination. So Arjun is calling them superiors and they are Pujarhav Arisudana, these are to be worshipped and you're asking Krishna to me to kill them. But Prabhupada says in the purport that yes, they were, they were uh, for financial reasons and political reasons, they did not take part. They were, um, they were in those circumstances fit to be rejected as gurus. But we know that Bhishma Dev knows the, um, he knows Krishna's uh, plan and Bhishma Dev knew that he was in the wrong camp and Bhishma Dev knew that Krishna uh, the Pandavas are going to win because Krishna is on their side. But Bhishma Dev is a real hero here. Or he's the winner, I should say. And in some sense, um, Arjun is the loser because he's losing, he lost everybody and he's losing his grandfather. This exchange among his devotees, I was thinking, wow, what is it? I mean, here, Bhishma Dev is in tears. Arjun was in tears before the war. He's in tears now. 
but the tears are described for Bhishma Dev. He's overwhelmed by love and affection. In our lives as devotees, you know, we, we could sometimes shy away uh, with emotions. Uh, but uh, Krishna consciousness is full of emotions. And amongst devotees, since we're talking about amongst devotees, sometimes in our own lives, if you have been long enough, you experience quite many things amongst devotees. I mean, people that you love, that you're close to, whether they're dear family members or they are uh, very close friends, sometimes they go to different camps. There are plenty of camps out there, whether it's, you know, other, you know, other philosophies, you know, whether it's with the philosophy or this much or that, you know, group or whatever. There's so many out there. So when your close uh, friends go in that direction, um, you're troubled. You love them. They love you, but yet the emotions are as such that you're distanced. Or maybe you feel distanced by your family members or, or, or close friends because they get involved in something that is not the best thing for them. And you feel for them. And you love them. And then in that kind of situation where you're distanced for some reason or other, and then they're leaving their bodies, oh my God, like you feel like, um, yeah, it's, it's very difficult. So what this Bhagavatam, we, we understand is Pibata Bhagavatam Rasala Alayam. This, is, this Bhagavatam is, is a place of, is, is full of rasa. So what is this that's making this a rasa between the two devotees here? It's not sentiment. We're not talking about some emotional, sentimental exchanges here. No. This is ecstasies, actually. That's why this is in the Bhagavatam. It's pure ecstasy between the two devotees here. Because everything we have just heard is because of Krishna. It is because of Krishna that Arjun shot arrows. It is because of Krishna that Bhishma Dev was on the other side to establish what it is that, that if you're on the other side of dharma, you're definitely going to be lost. You're definitely, you're going to, you're going to lose. So this is a Krishna-centered uh, emotional exchange here. So amongst devotees, uh, if we keep Krishna in the center of our lives, then our exchanges amongst devotees is also rasa, is also ecstasies. I think that is the main point. Krishna, Krishna is in, in the spiritual world is nothing but full of emotions. There's so much emotions are being churned. And in this material world, amongst Vaishnavas, certainly Krishna also churns our hearts. It's like churning the milk ocean. When you churn the milk of ocean, what came out first? Poison. Poison came out first. So when we are in our immature state, when our hearts are churned amongst Vaishnavas, the poison comes out, the anarthas comes out. But as long as we keep on churning that ocean, as long as we keep on following the process, that then that, that churning will eventually, what will come out is nectar. I think Devyanga Prabhu experiences that, and that's why he's smiling. But yes, if we continue to churn, our anarthas will keep on coming out, and then eventually we will have um, nectar, nectar come out in our exchanges amongst Vaishnavas. Because it's only through, uh, amongst uh, the Vaishnavas, the association of Vaishnavas, we rub against each other, then <coughs> that's how we get, um, I guess, smooth. I think Prabhupada gives some example about that, like the diamond or something. What is that example? Or the coal? Rub against each other and then become smooth or something. 
Uh, yeah, so, so um, this is something that is, this verse is um, um, something very, uh, very valuable in, in for ourselves uh, amongst devotees as we hear this, understand this, and what's going on in this. Uh, it's not just, oh, Bhishma Dev and Arjun and their feeling separation, but there's a lot of emotions, uh, all kinds of feelings, sadness, happiness, guilt, you know, um, separation, wow, uh, the emotions that are being churned here, and that's just our spiritual life. That's how Krishna deals with us, is he churns our hearts. I was thinking about how um, Varuna, he, he tells little Krishna churn, he has this thing going on where he says, my heart to your heart. And then little Krishna churn, who is two years old, he says, Nanu, my heart to your heart. And what is this going on? I was thinking it's just a devotee wanting to express or give his heart to another devotee. That's what, what we are looking for. We're looking. We want to give our feelings to another devotee. We want to exchange that love. We want to ex experience that love. Because that's one thing is that as a devotee we are compassionate towards uh, the, the ordinary soul. Amongst devotees we have friendship. And friendship is give and take of our, our emotions confidentially uh, ask and hear. And like that, you know, six exchanges. Uh, and then we have for Krishna where we give everything to Krishna. We go, give everything to Krishna, which we will see Bhishma Dev doing so in um, the later pages. So I will stop here. If you have any questions or comments on this subject matter, please um, do so now. Yes, Madam Very nice class. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, uh, that reminded me of drama that Annapayani did in the temple here too. Do you remember her drama? She did. That's right. Movie? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Annapayani had done that. Actually, Shamadarshini was telling because I was asking Shamadarshini whether she had seen she says no mom. Then I realized that that was long ago. But she told me that Annapayani had done with who? who Pani else? Pani Prabhu and uh, um, I don't remember who else mm -hmm. was there. Yeah, she was um, Kunti. Yeah. Yeah, it would be nice. It plays are something really, it can bring the emotions out. Uh, the, something very valuable. We hope that our younger generation um, comes up with plays. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I remember, um, I think um, some of the devotees had done this very nice play, uh, Vipralamba Bhava. Vani had, uh, Vani and Vrindavani had directed that play and it's just uh, uh, highest emotions being expressed in a play was just really, really nice. I remember Shamadarshini had some real amazing line in the end and was, yeah, it, it, plays are very important. I mean, that's, that's something that happens in the spiritual world, apparently. Every day there's a play of, of Krishna and, um, and everybody is watching Krishna watching the play. So all the Rajabhasis are looking at Krishna, how he's reacting to the play. And Krishna is looking at the play. But yeah, plays are a very important part of our, of, of our, our practices, actually. I mean, you have Rupa Goswami writing such plays. So we hope that the younger devotees would actually start doing plays again. And then Arjuna grew up thinking that <coughs> Bhishma Maharaj was his father. For a long time, he thought that he was his father. Uh, yeah. Well, he, in one sense, he was like a father to them because he, they didn't have a father. So he actually, you know, that's what happens sometimes when, when the parents are not there or the father is, mother is not there, then the grandparents take that role of being the father. They replace that role. So Bhishma, they were certainly the, like a father and a grandfather to the Pandavas. So yeah, you're, you're right in thinking that way. <laughs> and then you said about the Prabhupada gave the example of the rubble. Rubble in a, you put it in a, in a, uh, some sort of thing that goes over the hill. Mm -hmm. So the, the gravel quarrels with each other. 
but when it comes down it becomes a sand uh-huh. and coal you pressurize it and when you pressurize it a lot perfectly then it becomes diamond i think oh, that's yeah, what that's, that's the say. example that i was thinking yes about the coal the coal is yeah See, and then when our you pressurize it yeah thank you can you imagine from coal to diamond so there's some hope that we stay although with covid we are so physically distant from each other but that's all right we can still be um um be together otherwise and rub against each other we don't have to try even we just rub against each other it just happens naturally <laughs> anyway any other comments or questions yes mar mar marvin is that yeah, yeah. so our subtle body is still a material body in the sense that we have to transcend we have to purify mm. and our subtle body is made of our intelligence but also our emotions as mm. well as like our emotional body so my question is are there what what is that line what is the difference from emotions that keep in this material world emotions that are technically material or emotions that are transcendental or spiritual and go to the spiritual world mm. or is this emotion is this emotion or love is just love or is such a thing as emotions that keep you bound to the material world or emotions that liberate you from the material world oh they're definitely different they're definitely different actually and and that's the kind of uh, what i was expressing here we see between bhishma dev and arjun those emotions are spiritual there is no material element to it although they're related to each other materially but the exchanges that are happening here are totally spiritual the reason being arjun here his whole where he's at right now where with the the scene that has happened just now that we see in the bhagavatam this verse is because krishna was the center in their lives that's the reason arjun initially if you remember did not want to fight and those emotions were based on the body but then he transcended those emotions because krishna said no you have to go beyond this and you have to do it for me and therefore he arjun goes beyond his own personal emotions that he is my grandfather and i have to do what krishna is telling me to do so what arjun transcended you can see that was a big surrender for arjun what he did was a big surrender we see that also we see that um in kunti's prayers that we just went through kunti prayers kunti's prayer and kunti is saying to arjun and arjun i mean uh, kunti is saying to krishna while krishna is about to leave hastinapur and she says to uh krishna that oh dear krishna please cut off these attachments that i have for the pandavas and the vrishnas because although they're devotees but she's saying to please cut them cut this attachment but in the very next verse she's saying she addresses krishna as krishna sakha o friend of arjun so why would kunti on the verse before she's saying cut off this attachment and the next verse she addresses krishna as krishna sakha o friend of arjun why does she say that because she's saying cut off this material attachment but she 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 doesn't want to cut up the the spiritual attachment so krishna she sees that arjun is a devotee and krishna loves arjun so she's saying no not that but my material attachment so my thoughts on that is that if we are 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 fully krishna conscious then our emotions towards another devotee whether that's a family member or a friend it's become spiritualized spiritualized thank you thank you for the question yes to be comfortable hari bol um but since we're on the topic of bishna bishna's um position even though he was on the side of the the kauravas 
In one sense, his heart was with the Pandavas. He, he, he stood by the Kaurava side because he had promised Satyavati to protect Hastinapur. So he will do that at all costs, you know. So that was his main objective and, and that, that was why he was on that side. But really um, his heart was in the Panda, was in the whole war. You know, you could tell, I mean, all the time he would abuse Duryodhana and tell him, you know, stop the war and different things. But um, that's that. And another thing too, when... That's, that's a very good point. That, that's why he was the most, Prabhupada writes, he was the most satisfied man. Because his heart was there. His heart was, he had a sense of duty for the Kauravas. But his heart was, that was where his heart, that's why he's so satisfied today. Because he's so happy. And, and the other point, he could have left his body in, in the battlefield itself. He didn't, he didn't have to stay, but he, he waited two months for the sun to go to the northern horizon. But, but I mean, he could have left his body right away when, after he was shot like that. But because he had the bone from Shantanu, he could, he could leave his body at will. He just waited for that time. You know, but, well, he, you know. yeah, he might have waited for that, but he, he mainly waited for Krishna to come there so that he could uh, Speak leave his body, you know, um, in Krishna's presence. So, yes, thank you for the point. Um, Pangavanapa, will you have? If someone asks you, <coughs> from the outside the devotee uh, group. What we decide very much uh, depends on the kind of inner integrity where we have cultivated by the association we keep. After all, who we are solely depends on whom we associate with. And in Bhishmadev case, how do you explain that what he was doing, not s protesting against disrobing Draupadi's uh, such a humiliation uh, and tolerating for what? All these abuse against the Pandavas. And if, he, if that person is not a devotee, what is your explanation? Just curious to understand. Um, I, I remember um, the question I always had trouble with is with um, Ram leaving Sita in the forest and uh, how could Ram leave Sita? But then when I thought, thought about it deeper and maybe hearing from other devotees it helped me understand that Ram first of all was it's not that he left Sita there and he was um, enjoying in the palace he was feeling very uh, distressed that he left Sita and but he, although Sita was in a situation that was very it was very hard for her but you could see his love later on when he did not when he was asked to marry other Shatya's always married more than one he said no and then he uh, had a golden Sita at least that's the story I know made but not only that um, Ram was willing to have, in one sense, a bad name for himself, and Sita was glorified. So although Ram banished Mother Sita, she becomes the glorious one. Um, and Ram did what he did because as a... Um, as a king, 
he had to set the best example, even if it, that meant, best example means even if it meant that somebody who is uh, close to him, the closest person to him to banish that person. So he wanted to set that proper example. So what, what for me, what helped me to get beyond uh, being kind of like, um, let's say, upset with Lord Ram for banishing her, Mother Sita, it helped me to understand his uh, position and appreciating, you know, that he, he was in a more difficult situation than um, Mother Sita. And even to this day, people criticize Lord Ram. So um, I have thought more about that than what you were saying about Bhishma Dev. So uh, when you ask about Bhishma Dev, um, I thought about how I have resolved that Ram and Sita's uh, situation in my, in my mind. And so probably I would take the same, uh, same path in, in uh, seeing Bhishma Dev's situation that out of duty he had to do what he did. Um, yes, it's, it's like Bhishma Deva, how come you didn't speak up? Especially the whole one thing at Pana was going through different things, but maybe because being identifying myself as a woman, uh, it's very disturbing to see Bhishma Deva not responding to Draupadi. It's a very difficult situation. And so when you're asking me that, the only thing that come to my mind is to say that he was, he was bound. Uh, he, he was bound. I mean, he, he certainly, Draupadi asks a very pertinent question that Bhishma Dev also, according to scriptures, he responded in the appropriate way. His answer was also appropriate that the, the laws of karma is as such that it's very difficult to say what should be done or what should not be done. And so your situation is, are you, are you, is, uh, were you, you know, her question was, was I lost? If I was lost, if Yudhishthira gave me away after he had lost himself, then if he has already lost himself, how could he give me away? He has no right on me. But then, if, uh, if I am part of him, if he was lost, then I'm already given away. So how come you're asking me separate? How come I'm being brought separately uh, and, and being, um, you know, uh, wagered separately? And so Bhishma Dev gives his answer that the laws of karma are very difficult. So I don't know if I have answered your question, but it's just putting myself in, in Bhishma Dev's shoes, I would say that he had a very difficult situation because he was tied. And uh, ultimately, like you say, no, not to bring up Krishna as devotees, but I guess that's what I would say. Just like Lord Ram was tied, his hands were tied, Bhishma Dev's hands were tied. you have anything further to say, Pranga Vinipal? No, no, I just wanted to have a different view of this subject. Because generally we talk, like, the choice we make, that's what proves who we are, not really what uh, we are coming from, the royal family or these, that. It's not really as much important. People really see what I do, what choice I make in my life. So, I, I thought about it last few days, that Bhishma, they choose this. Okay, we understand it's reason Krishna he acted, but ordinary people, or outside the body, they really have no clue about Krishna. They just care for the moral law, what they can relate, uh, how to make them understand this is actually a spiritual first class example of what Bhishma they did. Like with Ram, Prabhupada gives that. Separation keeps the 
love alive. Uh, that's convincing. You know, even in the Gormi world, they say if you don't feel the absence uh, of a person, then what is the value of that person's presence yeah. <laughs> in a couple relationship or anything? Yeah. So, so we can relate with that. But Vishwadev is such a character, even among devotees, believe or not, among devotees all over the world, it's confusion, not so clear everybody understands about Vishwadev's position. I think, I think that's why, that's why Srimad Bhagavatam is Grantharaj. I think that's, so yes, moralist may say this or that, according to moralist, Karna is the, is the winner or, or Ekalavya is the hero or, you know, I mean, therefore it's so important for us to, to actually, Mahabharata is great and, and we offer our respects to Mahabharata for, you know, and is, this is coming after Mahabharata, we have the Bhagavatam. And therefore, it's so important for us to actually refer to Bhagavatam as devotees. It's so important because otherwise, if you, people get stuck on the Mahabharata, you get the wrong understanding of things, mm -hmm. really wrong understanding of things. And therefore, when we read the Mahabharata, um, Bhagavatam, we understand Bhishma Dev's position. We understand, we understand that, wow, look at that Krishna. Krishna is there, present, coming to fulfill Bhishma Dev's desire. I mean, what a great soul Bhishma Dev is. I mean, people have such wrong understandings with Mahabharata and Ramayana that are, are not, that they don't uh, approach the Bhagavatam. I mean, they think Narad Muni is some character, like, I mean, they have such a wrong understanding about Narad Muni. I mean, people have really long, wrong understanding of of so many characters there. And therefore, as devotees, we approach the Bhagavatam and understand through, through the eyes of the Bhagavatam, and then things become clear to us. Otherwise, we're stuck in the, Mahab um, the Mahabharata. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's the Yasadeva wasn't satisfied after the Mahab Mahabharata, you know. Public view in my village where I was born painted Narad Muni as a character that you don't want to utter the name in the house. <laughs> because then we'll have a fight. <laughs> and we don't want to have a fight among the you know, relatives, friends, and family. So never mention Narad Muni or this thing. It's such a sad. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's just like I had such a different conception about Narad Muni when I grew up with a certain conception of Narad Muni, but wow, I mean, and, and you hear from the eyes of the Bhagavatam from the eyes of the Vaishnavas, you know, Sri Prabhupada's mercy, we, we get the right understanding of all these um, characters. So, thank you very much. All glories to Srimad Bhagavatam.